Hey all, today I'm coming to you from a football field in the St. Louis area. Beautiful yet windy day in October. And uh, typically in October, on a field like this, we would have a lot of beat up grass because of football being played on it. But this year, because of COVID, there is not a football season here and so the grass looks perfect. Bluegrass is a really good choice for athletic fields because it uh, recovers really well after traffic. It doesn't have great traffic tolerance. It will get beat up, but it has rhizomes and so does recover really well following traffic. The bad thing about grasses that have stolons and rhizomes is that as a home lawn grass, they spread. So which is good if you've got thin spots, but you have to think about these grasses will spread into your beds in places that you don't necessarily want them. And so it's something that you'll have to keep on top of. Not that big of a deal. Uh, and I would rather have the spreadability of a grass, a self-repairing grass, than have to worry about uh, uh, anything with my beds. And so today we're gonna be talking about how to identify Kentucky bluegrasses and some of the use for this grass. Uh, it's a grass I grew up playing on. It was a grass that uh, was in our yard. And uh, to me, it's the best barefoot grass. It's a really soft textured grass. Kentucky bluegrass is a grass that uh, has excellent cold tolerance. You can find this grass well up into Canada uh, and it has marginal heat tolerance. Uh, we probably see it a little bit too much, maybe more so than we ought to in the transition zone. So let's break this map down a little bit. Can you grow Kentucky bluegrass in the orange and some of the gray areas of this map? Sure you can. The problem is as we get into the lower portion of the transition zone and into the south, it gets to be too hot for this grass. We can baby it along with extra water and fungicides, but environmentally, there are grasses that are better adapted to these regions and won't require additional inputs to keep them healthy. As you can see, it has an excellent dark green color. Uh, it stripes up really well with a, uh, a good mower on it and uh, is nice and dense. Also has very fine leaf texture on it as well. And so just an overall really pretty grass. Kentucky bluegrass will often be used for lawns, sports fields, golf course fairways and roughs, and general turf areas such as cemeteries and roadsides. It needs to be grown in full sun and can be mowed fairly low for golf or sports turf, but should be mowed from 2.5 to 3.5 inches on lawns. It generally has a dark green color and makes an aesthetically pleasing lawn. Contrary to what the name suggests, Kentucky bluegrass is not native to the United States, but was originally imported from cooler regions of Europe. To identify Kentucky bluegrass, we need to look for the following characteristics. First, it gets its name from the color of its seed head, which is a purplish blue color. The seed head has a Christmas tree shape and is referred to as a panicle. The seed head is normally found in the spring. Looking at the characteristics I defined in part one of this series, if the seed head is not present, the first thing I look for is the vernation. This is right at the top of the plant and refers to the newest leaf or the bud of the plant. This new leaf on Kentucky bluegrass is folded but can be tough to see without a hand lens. When you turn the leaf sideways, it'll look flat. The flat leaf will look like a piece of paper that's been folded in half. Moving down the plant, I next look at the ligule by bending back a mature leaf. The Kentucky bluegrass ligule is membranous, but is so small it is essentially not visible. Some characteristics that are common to other bluegrass plants including Kentucky bluegrass, annual bluegrass, and rough stock bluegrass are a boat shaped tip. The leaf almost looks like a canoe. There is a double midrib in the middle of the leaves which are otherwise not veiny. The midrib almost looks like train tracks running down the leaves. Flower shape is generally the same for bluegrasses as well, all showing that Christmas tree shape, although other bluegrass flowers may be different colors. The annual bluegrass ligule is membranous and much larger than Kentucky blues as well. The one turf grass that you may confuse Kentucky bluegrass with is perennial ryegrass. The vernation is folded for both and leaves are similar, although perennial ryegrass does not have a double midrib and has small veins across the leaf. Color is often similar, ligule for both is somewhat similar as well. Perennial ryegrass has a shiny backside of the leaf that Kentucky bluegrass does not have. Perennial ryegrass does not have rhizomes, and if you pull the leaves back away from the sheaf, the base of the perennial ryegrass plant is often purple. This is a characteristic you will never find on Kentucky bluegrass. 
One of the things you'll find is that nothing is ever set in stone with Mother Nature. If you don't find purple on the base of a perennial ryegrass plant, pull up some others and eventually you will find some. Although there are other grasses that have a purple base to the plant, Kentucky bluegrass will never have purple. And so if you're ever confused between Kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass, look for this purple color at the base of the plant. So again, with all the grasses that we're talking about, keep looking at them, keep looking at the characteristics that uh, we've gone over a number of times. With Kentucky bluegrass, look for that uh, lack of a legule, the folded vernation, the rhizome underground, the train tracks up the leaves, and the boat-shaped tip.